Welcome to this unusual broadcast from First Congregational Church, a church that goes back so far in Beloit's history, and a church that had continual meetings, really from the very beginning, all the way up until very recently. And as we know, this pandemic affected not just Beloit, but certainly our country and truly the world. And so given that as a backdrop, we feel it's important for the spiritual nurturing to continue. And so in that vein, we're going to share this with you. And I hope, if you can, to let others know that this is a service that is going to be available each week on our website. And hopefully the word will get out and more people will be able to see it. So I'd like to start with an admonition of a call to worship, which is, Lord, in these troubling times, we had asked that this service might assuage fears and provide hope for a needy people as we look to the future, an uncertain future in so many ways for so many people. We pray, O oh Lord, that we'll feel your presence and hopefully the message today will make the difference in some lives. Amen. scripture lesson that I'm going to start out with today is a very famous scripture lesson that's out of the book of Ephesians. And uh, it's about putting on armor. And as I state this, uh, we have to go back 2,000 years to the way that soldiers dressed at that time, what they used to protect themselves. And the writer of this particular passage drew the analogy of what we as Christians need to put on in order to have a life that's worthy of what God has given unto us. So out of Ephesians, uh, here are these words, chapter 6, starting in verse 10. Finally, let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. Put on all the armor that God gives you. We are not fighting against humans. We are fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world. So put on all the armor God gives. Then when the evil day comes, you'll be able to defend yourself. And when the battle is over, 
you will still be standing. Be ready. Let the truth be a belt around your waist and let God's justice protect you like armor. A soldier back at that time, the belt was essential. And not only would it be used to provide some support for him, but he'd be clipping different things on his belt, not unlike soldiers do today. Your desire to tell the good news about peace should be like the shoes on your feet. And in other words, we need to share that sense of peace. And I think in the midst of this terrible pandemic that's going on, the more that we can share a sense of peace, the better it is. Let your faith be like a shield and you'll be able to stop all the flaming arrows of the evil one. This may seem like it's sort of strange about these flaming arrows, but again, going back to antiquity, the, the shield would be made basically out of wood and then they would put animal hide on it. And before battle, they would dip them in water. So as when the flaming arrows came, it would not catch anything on fire. And so it's saying unto us, that your faith should be this shield and you'll be able to stop all the flaming arrows. And for us, those might be things such as a desire to do something we know we shouldn't do, to think thoughts that are not what we should be thinking. Those are the kind of things that this is referring to. Let God's saving power be like a helmet and for a sword use God's message that comes from the Spirit. Never stop praying, especially for others. Always pray by the power of the Spirit. Stay alive and keep praying for God's people. And so we hear this, a sense of what it is that we are to put on and what it is we are to wear. I'd like to share now with you a relatively brief message. And the, the message uh, that I'm going to share with you Really, the genesis of it comes from a book I'm currently reading by Eric Larson. It's called The Vile and the Splendor. And it's about a very compact time period. We need to go to England, and the year is 1940. And what's happened is France has just surrendered, meaning England is all by itself. And the people in England then had a lot to be concerned about the nightly bombing raids, but more significantly, the idea that, that Germany was now in a position to be able to invade that island, something that's never been done successfully before. And imagine then if you were living in London and let's say you had a couple of children and you hear these news that France, the great nation with such a strong military surrendered so quickly, how powerful the Germans must be. You can only imagine the fear that welled up in the hearts of those people, wondering what are they gonna to do to protect their children? What about their parents? What about their property? What about everything in life? Can the country survive? So as I'm painting this picture, I'm doing it for a specific reason, which is this pandemic certainly presents challenges to us. It presents health challenges, and for many people, financial challenges. It also provides challenges in terms of our outlook, wondering about the frailty of life, if you will. Well, we have things to worry about, of that there's no question. But when you compare the two, what was going on in England and what is going on in America right now, as well as other countries in the world, they're not exactly comparable. One is obviously a medical issue, and the other is physical aspects of war. But nonetheless, both generate within the human mind this sense of fear. And I think for a lot of us, the greatest sense of fear is the unknown. when We don't know exactly what's happening or what's going on. Uh, I, I compare it to if you went into the doctor's office and you had a test, and it was a significant test that may affect your life. As you're waiting for that test, that is so difficult and so hard because there's that uncertainty, that fear that, what if I have that? What's gonna to happen to me? And then you wait and finally get the call. When you know what it is, 
you can deal with it. But again, it is the uncertainty. And I think given this COVID virus 19, what we see here is the sense of fear of the unknown. If you're in a room, you wonder, I wonder if that person has it. If you go to the store, you wonder if you should touch that. Maybe some of you had it, has touched it. It's this unknown. And then, as we know, this virus has produced different um, symptoms in different people. Some people are asymptomatic, while others get very sick. Uh, it runs the gamut. And again, the uncertainty, if I got it, what, what's going to happen to me? And and finally, as we look at this, which is the the aspect of, are, are we meeting the response to this? Are so many Americans are in such a bad place right now? What, what can we do or how can we help? So amidst all this fear, I just want you to think about putting on this whole armor of God for a moment. I think those people who are working at grocery stores, honestly, they put on the whole armor of God. Every day they go in to stock those shelves and there's countless number of people that are going through and yet they stay there working. I mean, to me, they are amazing. I think about the truck drivers who are going day and night hauling the supplies to be able to keep our country in food and other necessary items. I think about the first responders who are going out and picking someone up at their house to bring them in for medical care not knowing whether this person might have the virus. And then the whole medical community. Ponder for a minute what it would be like if your husband or your wife was a doctor and they went there and you know they're in the very worst place possible, which is in a hospital, because that's where the sick people are. And yet they managed to do their work. The doctors, the nurses, the CNAs, the maintenance staff at the hospital, everybody doing their part in order to keep people as healthy as they possibly can. To me, those people have put on the whole armor of God and they should serve as an inspiration to us. It's sort of like in England, Winston Churchill and his war of words against the Nazis really invigorated a whole nation and caused them to have this sense of purpose and a sense of hope that they will endure. So as we, as we look at this, it really shouldn't test our faith. I personally would never believe that God brought this virus into the world to kill people and to cause problems. It's not the God that I worship. It's not the God that I believe in. A God who in scripture tells us that whether we live or whether we die, we live in Christ. A God who's provided all things for us in all ways. So this virus is not a God virus. He's not out trying to kill people. He didn't start this virus. We as humans have free will. And sometimes we as humans don't make good decisions. And then we as humans end up paying the price. So as I reflect on this, I, I hope you have a sense of, of understanding that this too will pass, but we need to play our part. We need to be the quiet heroes, to stay at home, to go out only when we need to, to practice distancing, to do those things that we know work in this virus. And then there'll be treatments and those could be coming out within a month or two for those that have this terrible disease, kind of sickness, we also know that in probably a year or so, there'll be a vaccine that we'll be able to get and life will go on. But let me say this, America was caught unprepared for this. When we did away with this whole part of the government, which was devoted to it, and it was decided to sack them and not to have them. So we made some bad decisions in this country and we're paying a price for it. But now we've got the message. And I think going forward, that message will stay with us. This will not and should not happen again. And so as I conclude this, I'll just say, in my life, I've never experienced anything on this order, but you know something? I'm not the only person. But I must tell you that my mother wrote a very interesting book about growing up in Janesville, Wisconsin, 
during this time period of the Spanish flu. And in 1918, unfortunately, her aunt came down to take care of my mother and the other siblings. And while she was in Janesville, she contracted the Spanish flu and she died. And it's a, it's a very tragic story. And I, if I could and I had more time, I would read the passage. I think you'd be moved by it. The point being, sometimes it doesn't always work out. She came down to help and yet she died. But she had the whole armor of God on. We just pray that as we move forward, that this armor will protect us. We have much better medical facilities and an understanding of how things work today. And so I guess I say, fear not and believe that things will improve and that we will get through this, but we have to play our part and we need to help those who need help. And we also need to recognize those who are sacrificing for us. Amen. I would like to end with this benediction that I always use. It's called the Aaronic Benediction. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and to be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace now and evermore. Amen.